fourth and uh, should be final uh, committee meeting uh, uh, on service delivery strategy and uh, chair mcginn and i have uh, been communicating a lot with with some of you and the the two associations uh accg and gma and uh hope we can have some good discussion good discussion today and uh, make make great strides towards wrapping this up so um I want to thank those committee members who have uh, chimed in with recommendations or responses to the draft recommendations. Uh, it's very helpful to keep the conversation going. Uh, before we go any further, I would like to uh, ask someone to open up in prayer. And uh, Chairman Prince is going to do that for us. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to come together and do the business of this great state of Georgia. Father, we ask that everything we do here be pleasing unto you. Guide us, strengthen us, give us your wisdom, guidance, but most of all, thank you for your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Chairman Prince. All right, so um, we will call the meeting in order. Um, You've all seen the uh, the draft recommendations, which I will get in front of me. And um, Mayor Ward has uh, sent us all his responses to those, his recommendations, and uh, Commissioner um, Chris Dockery has has done the same as early as this, recent as this morning. So um, uh, what I'd like to do is just hear uh, from the committee members um you know, your thoughts on these recommendations and then um i've had some conversations offline with with uh, chairman again and we both talked with accg and gma and what we'd really like to see here because I, i've been in the legislature since 2018 and this this issue predates that by a few years a few decades yeah um, but the way I understand it, th this issue has been, you know, there's been talks to, to resolve some of these, these differences, the dispute resolutions for at least 15 years. And here we are still talking about it. And uh, we've had this study committee that uh, GMA and ACCG and, and others have asked for, uh, and we're still not quite there um, with, with a joint agreement. Or, or, or list of, of recommendations that both parties are uh, agreeing, you know, to be, to be the solution to this uh, um, dispute resolution. So uh, what what I'd like to do is just talk through these these comments, um, and then ask the two associations to get together in short order and get back with Chairman Ginn and I on you know those points you can agree on and uh i hope there's only just a small small number that you say you can't agree on but we need something that we can go into legis into session with or else this is going to continue and then we'll look back 15 years from now and we might we might still be having this same conversation so um chairman prince thank you mr chairman um and again, I'm looking at the recommendations, and you know, I think they're spot on. However, come I know uh, ACCG and GMA were had policy meetings or something else going on around the same time. Will they have time? Because I think, well, I'm, I'm I guess I'm asking a question. Don't we have to have a report or something back to the uh, Lieutenant Governor and, and the Speaker here? By the we end of the we year? do. The initial deadline was December 1st, which is passed, um, and we asked for an extension, and they gave oh, us okay. an extension to December 31st. So thank you for clarifying that. So we do have till December 31st. However, we don't want to wait till the 11th hour of this extension. Um, and I'll ask Chairman again to weigh in too, but um, I think, you know, we have holidays coming up. Uh, today is what the today the fourth um that's right santa's on his way and so first of all this meeting today uh we've agreed needs to wrap up within an hour and then we'd like the two associations to come back to us uh with your uh, approved recommendations um in plenty of time for us to to get together on a report before the end of the year so i'd say before christmas um do we want to set a hard date to meet with them, 
Yes. <laughs> the, uh, uh, we got a question from uh, Chairman Burns. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As we look at these recommendations, there are, I guess, uh, six. Is that right? Is there consensus on any of the six? Is there a consensus that we could say we can settle those and leave the two or three that might still need more consideration? I'd, uh, I'd love to get the closure that? on I something. I would like to hear the answer to that from the parties, All right, you know, if there's I, consensus I, I, to I, both. I would, if, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to suggest that, that – uh, ACCG and GMA address all of the six recommendations and just say we're good with this we'd like to consider this further that's what I wanted what I'd like to hear uh, I, I don't see a, a, a great deal of contentious debate about statewide mapping standards for SDS agreements they may be but I just I would say I don't anticipate that so uh, thank you, Chairman Burns. What I'd like to do is uh, hear from hear from the two parties, but also I'd like uh, uh, Commissioner Dockery and Mayor Ward to be able to, to summarize their recommendations for us um, while we're all here together. So uh, looks like Commissioner Dockery might be ready to do that now. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I would I would just suggest that we, as the committee, uh, since that's our charge to come up with. Um, this report that we go through it and uh, come up with what we think is right and then if there are outstanding issues uh, that we as a committee can't iron out then th we give ACCG and GMA time uh, to look at those issues or help us to address those issues as to what a compromise could be and then uh, of course I can't speak for GMA, but ACCG, we would want to go back and vet that through our uh, policy council. And and we could do that. We could do that via Zoom uh, in short order. So I, I don't think that's an issue. But I would suggest that uh, we as a committee go through each one of these bullet points uh, and discuss them as a committee. And then if there are outstanding issues, maybe ACCG and GMA here with us today could help us get through those. Just a recommendation. Yes, I, I'm in favor of, of doing just that. Um, but I'm not in favor of uh, finalizing the report without Correct. ACCG and GMA saying we agree with this or we don't agree with it officially. Um, that, that's what I want. I want some finality to the, uh, to the report from from each association so uh would you like to go first and explain your summarize your recommendations that you sent out to us uh, i'll be glad to uh, do we just want to go over the first bullet point which is statewide mapping i can tell my position and then if anybody on the board or on the committee wants to uh give theirs and just do them one at a time yeah is that, that works for me what's your say mr chairman okay so the statewide mapping i i do think that that's good it adds a lot of standardization um, and in my comments, one of the biggest concerns I had is um, forcing communities to identify 100% of, of, of their areas um, as for service delivery. In other words, there may be some areas that are not designated, and they, you know, a community may desire to leave that undesignated not knowing what the future development may be because if you designate it a certain way and then the development comes in and it's completely different from what you anticipated uh, then whoever's designated to provide that service might not be able to so i'm not sure that there's a benefit um, to making sure 100 percent of the land areas would be designated by doing so i think what you're doing is you're forcing communities to do a pencil drill where we say well we'll just do this and you do that without any thought behind it and then when it comes down to it uh, it might not be the right answer and it could be very contentious in doing so um, one thing that has to be considered is the ability of certain communities um, to do the gis mapping so you know that uh, might be a fallback to uh, regional commissions to help with those things because I'm not so sure that every municipality and every county in the state of Georgia uh, 
has this that same capability for GIS uh, mapping and then we talked about <clears throat> the DCA rulemaking authority and I think that's a bullet point on down but I think it's applicable here because this is a very specific um, a very specific issue that I think that that rulemaking authority could be a big benefit because as technology changes maybe the requirements for those maps would change as well so that's i don't think that's something that has to come back to a legislative body to update so that would be in my mind a good place for dca to have that rulemaking authority to change what that requirement would be and it, it would be equal across the board for all communities so those were my big comments on uh, the uh, statewide mapping standards mr chairman all right so just for my clarification, the rulemaking authority to DCH, uh, I believe that's the, um, I believe that's what some believe is giving too much of the legislature's uh, role away to, to uh, not DCA, excuse me, uh, DCA. Is that, am I right on that? Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, I think if you just give uh, an, a blank check, so to speak, to DCA, you're putting them in a very uncomfortable position um, because I think that is the job of the legislatures. But if it's something as simple as what's required as far as mapping, a very specific rulemaking function, then I think that uh, that, that would be acceptable. It certainly would in, in my eyes because it allows them to adjust maybe as technology changes. But to come up with uh, rulemaking authority as far as how you're going to have dispute resolution, uh, I don't, I don't think that DC that they're going to do. I'm sure what you tell them to do, but I don't think that that puts them in a very comfortable position uh, to pick winners and losers or uh, to come up with a process that favors one uh, government entity over another. So um, the the rulemaking just as a blank check, I'm opposed to. But if it's a specific, that if it's a, spe a specific issue that can be defined, I think there's a place for it. All right, thank you. Uh, and that's your uh, position on on bullet point. The first bullet point, uh, Mayor Ward. Would you like to speak to that one? Sure. All right. What number are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I think the low-hanging fruit on this is the uh, statewide mapping. Uh, when I think policy, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the role we play on the mayor level is to set policy as opposed to set procedure, if you will. So the why and the how is what we, you know, uh, the why and the what is a lot of what we answer. The how, we try to maybe leave that up to um, our staff a little more. So that's more the long, along the lines of what I was thinking in this. But if we just look at Chairman Dockery's report and kind of eliminate mine for a minute or his, his input, uh, I don't believe that um, under the first bullet point, his subheading number one, I don't think that uh, the GMA uh, position will differ greatly, that there could be uh, territories that are left um, unestablished, if you will, uh, because then it wouldn't necessarily be a, well, you have to take it from me later. If it's unestablished for now, it could be unestablished on an ongoing portion. And I think in, in support of that, if you were to look at the, uh, proposed recommendation on my report on page one. Um, that, that's why we kind of indicated there, including data and parcel uh, jurisdiction level. Uh, so then we, we really lay this thing out and we know what the data and parcel jurisdiction levels are. Um, with regard to the uh, DCA rulemaking authority, I don't know that we drilled down that close. Uh, we did recognize that the Georgia Geospatial Information Office has on its board members of GMA and members of ACCG. And, and more so leaned in the direction of saying, hey, these are mapping services that, that both of these entities have uh, a part in, and let, let that mapping service you know, play more of a role. Uh, so to keep my comments brief and to help, help us get through this, I think that's about where I wanted to start. Okay, thanks. Chairman Ginn? And I think they're both hitting on the same thing. For me, when I talk about, in, in my mind, DCA's rulemaking, you know, this is what you've got to have in your maps. This is what you've got to do. And I think that, that DCA can, can work with us as local governments to make sure that, you know, across the, the 
uh, state, there is uniformity in those maps, and I think those rules can come from DCA. I don't think that's something that we need to legislate in. But I do think that when I look at, uh, and, and truly the first attempt in Georgia that I know anything about on service delivery was maps that were created for the Electric Territorial Service Act of 1973, where you identified uh, all areas of the state for who's going to serve with what area. There are a few places in that map that show that there are some undetermined areas of the state, but very few. And so for me, when I think about most counties, yeah, there'd be, there'd be some counties, I think about the Okefenokee Oak, Swamp or something like that, that, hey, it might, it might not be one of those places we'd, we'd put in the map as far as who's going to serve as delivery in there. But very, very few. I think it'd be the exception to the rule, and I'd like to see that, that – you know, and when when the maps are done, as much as possible would be there. I think it would because then you you you're either on this team or that team as far as who's going to serve it. And then I think what, and I give my my local officials a lot of credit that they can work amongst themselves to okay, it's it's ours now. Either you're going to serve it or, or tell me that you can't. If you can't serve it, then the other, other uh, service providers would come in and serve it. But I think it's by having it known when you, when you agree to a service delivery map that it is in A or B or C or D or any of the providers that may be in that community, by, by it being an assigned to at least one of them, if they can't provide it, then uh, somebody else can step up to the plate and, and make that recommendation and for me I think that's that's a prime example of where we'd use DCA's rulemaking ability to to hey here's what your map's going to be like here's the format here's what you got to do thank you chairman again um, any more discussion on on the first bullet on the maps that one seems pretty agreeable all right, second bullet point. Uh, Mayor Ward, you want to go first on that one and explain your recommendation? I think you agreed on it. I appreciate you giving me the easiest one on the board. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, the consolidated governments can make their own rules and get along with themselves much easier than cities and counties that are not consolidated. <laughs> All right, and uh, Commissioner Dockery? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I didn't have any any comments on that one either okay. that's kind of a no-brainer yeah and i don't mean to skip over anybody else if you've got anything to weigh in so that one seems pretty simple as well all right how about the third bullet point who wants to start anybody have any comments on uh reconsidering the issue of veto power i think that's the not so easy one i had a i had a lengthy response on that one if you'd prefer i start you want to summarize your your thoughts sure go ahead uh, we, uh, I think in conjunction with the staff we tried really hard to to modify this one to where it was a hopefully a simple uh, recommendation um, that could be adopted that was broad enough it could be adopted uh, with regard to the veto power we feel like primarily the thing to look at is that the, the consideration of a holdout city um, was addressed in the current legislation. And I think I've cited the statute there. I don't want to try and recite those off the top of my head. But we definitely can understand the, the uh, discrepancy that a small city trying to take captive everyone else could be an issue. But there is already a statute that says if it's a small city, well, they are still able to hold out. They're not forced to provide the service, but that doesn't cause penalties against the county or the other cities that bought in. We, we see a, a lot of wise decision making and how that's already drafted and don't see the reason to alter that. Um, with regard to you know coming to an agreement, we also see some wisdom in the required signatories as they're currently drafted. It's literally, if you look at the statute, I mean, it's just a chart of one, two, three, four. Uh, the, these folks can rattle that off the top of their head. I'm not that uh, eloquent, but we don't see a lot of reason to uh, alter that format either. Uh, with regard to, to establishing a new veto power versus what's the current signature um, you know, perspective. Uh, I think that's a good high level for where we are at the moment. So if I'm right, you, you would prefer just to remove that recommendation from the list. That's right. <coughs> yeah. That's right. We, we just think that the current plan with regard to preserving any chance of the county getting harmed by a small city being a holdout has already been dealt with. And we think the current plan of required signatures under, under this four-level process, we think that's appropriate. We, we don't see a reason to try and 
modify those. Okay. All right. Anybody want to respond with thoughts? Do you have thoughts on this one, Commissioner Dockery? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, Mayor, you said there was a process in place by which a smaller city could not hold all the other party, parties hostage. Can somebody smarter than me explain what that process would be? Does it go based on population? How does that? County C. Larry, I don't know if you want to address it, but for me, a good example would be, I'll pick on Franklin County where I was county manager. The, the county seat was one of the smaller counties, the smaller cities population-wise in the city as far as the county. The, uh, and if you don't have that signature from the county seat, you, you basically can hold the agreement up, if, is my understanding. I think that's right, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Larry Ramsey with ACCG. So the existing law that Mayor Ward is talking about uh, lists what local governments have to sign off for a service delivery strategy to be submitted to DCA. That's the county, the city that serves as the county seat, as Chairman Ginn was saying. Any other city that has at least 9,000 population, then at least half of the cities that are within between 500 people and 9,000 people. So. In effect, what that means, if you have a city that's less than 500 people, they don't get a vote, they can't hold it up. And then some number, if you have multiple cities between 500 and 9,000, only half of them have to sign off. So there could be some that, that are, don't have a vote that could hold it up in that category. But of course, that will vary county by county depending on what the city makeup is. All right, Mayor Ward. Yeah, on, on page two of five in the report I put together, the, the last sentence of the second to last paragraph, uh, OCGA 367027B1. Uh, when I went, what I did and when I got y'all's report is I reread the uh, entire act just to try and make sure I was fresh on what we were thinking and, and where it could apply. And that's where this one already does mitigate against sanctions uh, against the county and any other municipality located in such county in the circumstances of a hold up by a city of less than 500 people uh, we felt like that's a good good statute there mr chairman if i may I, when when this was brought up um in brazelton I, i'm not i can't remember who brought this this issue up but i was thinking that uh it might have been somebody representing a municipality that brought this up i i'm i don't have a strong feelings one way or another because i think it could uh affect municipalities equally as counties and if it's something that um, is not that important or beneficial to to include then you know i'm i'm okay with it taking it out so uh, the idea is on the table to, to remove it is this what does the committee think about you know part of the purpose here is to um, uh, put some processes in place that encourage dispute resolution is is taking this out going to soften that or is it going to um, uh, be another barrier to to come into a resolution to encourage these uh, disagreements to to linger um, with respect to the GMA side of this, I feel like what we're also looking to incorporate is going to be m maybe more effective and more uh, appropriate. I, I do think uh, the encouragement towards sanctions and the encouragement towards better procedures for sanctions. So maybe we don't make a decision on this third bullet point at the moment, but we wait to see how we discuss the others and feel if those would be the right process and we can come back to yep. if we need to. Yeah, I do, do believe that the fifth bullet point about the, the sanctions uh, may it's going to gravitate this. That's right. Yes, sir. So, all right. So we'll move on to the fourth bullet point, uh, which states further consideration of use of arbitration versus mediation in the case of disputes and whether both or neither should be binding. Any comments there? I think Chair Dockery should should lead on this. We I tried to <laughs> lean into his comments more so in mine uh, to to make sure we we felt that way. All right, Chairman Dockery. So I think it all goes back to home rule. Um, 
you know, I was involved in loss negotiations and baseball arbitration, and we all know what the court ruled as it related to uh, the baseball arbitration. Um, I'm not sure that you can have binding mediation. I'm not sure what that looks like. Uh, I think mediation should be encouraged as a first step. And then I think arbitration is a good method of resolution as long as both parties uh, agree to go into arbitration. So, you know, if you just establish the, uh, the recommended process, I think um, that's what should be done. I'm, I'm not so sure that, that the binding um, uh, should be included. The, you know, again, I think it all goes back to home rule, and um, I can't remember who said it in Brazelton, but, you know, your local officials are elected to do these things. And when you take a decision out of the hands of the local officials and you put it into um, some special panel that's made up of people outside your community, I'm not so sure that that's what our constituents are uh, expecting us to do so I'm not in favor of that panel or any binding arbitration I think arbitration should be encouraged uh, mediation and then arbitration uh, but I'm not in favor of any binding arbitration by an independent third party that's appointed by somebody other uh, than the people that should be held accountable in those communities Go ahead. If I may, Mayor. Mr. Chair, I think we actually have some common ground here. Uh, as a person who deals with, uh, there's a bunch of words here. Let's, let's get the word salad correctly, if we will. Alternative dispute resolution, or ADR, kind of begins on the spectrum of mediation, and then it goes up to arbitration, and then it would go to binding arbitration. That's kind of the three-layer spectrum, if you will, of of alternative dispute resolution. I think the current statute incorporates mediation as a mandatory role, and I think the consequence of that mediation has not been harsh enough if we're gonna get into the consequences discussion. I and think is that where you, you uh, believe the next bullet point would address? I, well, I think this in this article, f this number four bullet point um, is gonna lend itself. To, what, what I personally see is that we can use this role of uh, what Chairman Dockery just said was, hey, not binding arbitration, but arbitration. Uh, I, I think that's a common ground we could look at. And that's a ratcheting up of consequences uh, to, to just help further that beginning illustration and hopefully not to go too long. Mediation, yeah, you know, I have failed mediations, right? I sit down with my clients. They're not gonna come to a, a resolution. They're not gonna settle the case for less than what they want. So the, the whole process is a failure. It's all under a confidentiality perspective and you walk away. An arbitration is where a neutral third party is gonna actually issue a decision and that decision could be made public. And that's where maybe it's not binding on the parties, but we think that could be another layer of accountability and consequence if we wanna look at arbitration versus just the mediation angle that's currently in the statute. Does that make sense to you on how I see that as a consequence? I think so, yep. Okay. So, so that's where the, the two roles of this that we feel like on the GMA side that, that I believe we've talked about, uh, I'm not looking at my colleagues enough to get nodding heads, I should probably do that. Is, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of heads over there, I'm not sure if they're all looking down or looking at me. Um, they're looking at each other. Yeah, like what the, who put this guy up there, right? right. Uh, but, uh, but I think if we were to look at arbitration uh, to to, rec to make a recommendation to increase the ADR option from mediation to arbitration, and then to also consider this closed record discussion that was uh, mutually, I think, offered by the, uh, the ACCG and GMA panel, uh, and that I feel very strongly about to say that it does expedite resolution. When you close down the number of arguments, you just think of it as a criminal prosecution, right? This is the one that's the easiest for everybody to understand. If you're, if you're accused of a crime, the prosecution's got to tell you everything that they're going to charge you with and all the evidence they have. And you know what that does? That gets 99% of cases settled that, that people take a plea agreement because everybody understands what, what's going to be on the table and what's going to be dealt with in front of the judge and what the arguments are going to be. 
and then they they cop a plea deal or they go and fight it right but but you see the percentages from my colleagues that are in the prosecution side so i really feel like the closed record component i would i would again encourage that uh, and encourage it along the arbitration level maybe more so than the mediation level all right so and i know you're you know uh, more aligned with with uh gma and and uh chairman Dockery more aligned with ACCG, although not necessarily speaking officially for either one, and that's why um, I'd love, you know, um, at the proper time for for both associations to let us know what they Condone. what their what their official position is on on this. And uh, Commissioner, did you have anything to add to Mayor no, Ward's comments? I, I think I think like Mayor Ward said, there's some some common ground there. And if you go to the next bullet point five, um, you know, if there's consequences for not reaching an agreement, that goes right in line. I, I'm just not so sure that binding uh, is the last and final step. So, I mean, if you have mediation and arbitration, I do like the idea of disclosing your arguments, uh, your closed record, as you call it, disclosing everything that you're going to present. Uh, so that you don't have new things popping up that I've been through that that's ugly uh, it it kind of galvanizes both sides when you do that so um, I would I would be in agreement with that it's just that the whole binding part I don't think I can support I, I all right well let's talk about that fifth bullet point the uh, clear definitions for sanctions um, with counsel to review the current legal viability of withholding loss slash loss funds from noncompliance with SDS renewal. Um, I know a previous version of this maybe went as far to, to talk about a, a time frame, maybe six month, um, up to six month abeyance, but after that, you know, the consequences sink in. Um, I'd like to hear some comments on on this one because I think this is where we're actually getting into uh, you know forcing the the parties to to make a decision and to come to some agreement I mean this is when this is when citizens will start to, to feel it right. and notice it yeah the, and that light let's let chairman Dockery speak first <laughs> <laughs> well, you always want me to go first no, I, I agree that I, but I think it needs to be a timeline and I think uh, that uh, that vice needs to tighten. Um, you know, you, you're not going to drop a hammer to start with. So those uh, those sanctions, if you will, uh, would be graduated. So you know, as you go through your mediation, your arbitration, uh, the the results of the arbitration made public, uh, and then you start losing some of your funding or your status, your ability for funding. Uh, but then I think if that is graduated, now what that actually looks like, uh, it's probably going to take somebody smarter than me. But there has to be consequences. At the end of the day, there has to be consequences. These things that go on for seven years are, um, are, are crazy. So I think if there's consequences and it's, it's very well laid out up front, then I think that gets the parties to the table. When you start having more to lose than you have to gain, I, th I think if I can steal some of my lawyer talk and you go back and talk about Beccaria, the punishment has to outweigh the benefits of the crime. Is that right, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> so uh, when you go back and look at that, I think that, um, you know, the punishment or, or the consequences have to outweigh what you're gaining by holding out. That's the only way it's going to work. But it, ha it needs to be graduated. That's my thoughts. You, you've got agreement here, I think. Uh, the, the way ours is drafted, if you, if you were to look at the statute, 3670.25.1D2, um, this is discussed on page five of five of my report. Um, but again, D2 is where the statute currently allows the court to hold that, uh, those sanctions in abeyance. And the way that I redrafted the proposed recommendation uh, on page two with regard to this is just to say that uh, further consideration on imposing sanctions at staggered levels and intervals, which I think uh, Chairman Dockery is talking about a spectrum of how to do that. Exactly. Uh, you know, the, the illustration I give in, in my discussion on this is kind of start with removing radar permits and then 
as it ratchets up and and i would be extremely naive and inappropriate to say what those levels should be and, and what those penalties should be at what level but i, I do think that's where uh, you were thought of saying hey accg gma we really want a firm list on this i think we're all in agreement as a committee that that they would want to do that and, and to further comment i've said in a previous meeting that if, if you say arbitration is going to take six months to do well then maybe you allow them to be held in abeyance if you're participating in arbitration for those but after that arbitration the the material the consequence kicks in yep i personally like that one i think that that's, that's the, the, the one that's gonna get things moving all right so um i think what we want to do is hear hear from uh gma and accg on more specifics um on the the graduated sanctions um all right the last bullet granting rulemaking authority to dca i think the mayor should idea go or not? first <laughs> Chairman again. Thank you. One of the things, and uh, you know, it's it's come up, and and this happens in our legislative process. We have a lot of different boards and associations in the state, and oh, DCA being one of those. If they're uh, looking at a rule making and rule changing situation, then part of that they have to notify the legislature, the uh, and the correct committee in the legislature that that rule change is is. Uh, subject to take place that gives the legislature an ability to put that if the if the appropriate committee objects to that they can they can pull it back so there's one of the things that there is a check and balance on that we when we give them rulemaking authority there's still a string attached that we can reel them back in if it gets too far off off note and i think that's important to know the uh what we do with with our our different boards and authorities the uh across the state so uh, not to put anybody on the spot too much, but uh, with DCA in the room, is that something that you feel like, you know, some limited rulemaking authority is something that would work for you? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, we've gone through the six bullets, and it uh, looks like some are pretty easy to agree on, and others are going to need a little bit more, uh, I think, meeting of the minds between the, the stakeholders. Um, Chairman Ginn and I feel like December 15th is a reasonable time to, um, you know, allow the parties to, to meet and get back with us on, um, um, you know, just tell us out of these recommendations, which ones can you agree on and which ones do you not agree on? Uh, wh or what's your position on e each of these? And if you want to get a little more specific in some of them, I'm, I'm okay with that too. Mr. Chairman, can I make one last comment on number six? And I'm just going to read my bullet point two verbatim because I think the Department of Community Affairs does a great job for local governments, uh, both municipalities and counties in the state of Georgia. But uh, I'll just read that bullet point, and I think that sums it up. It says, D DCA should be a neutral state agency that's not subject to special interest or political pressure from either side without specifying the rulemaking authority it will put this agency in a very precarious uh, position of potentially being influenced by special interest organizations. Uh, this holds true when selecting panels uh, by DCA as well. So even just those panels that DCA selects, uh, you, you know, I think it would be very naive to think that there wasn't some political posturing as to who's going to serve on those panels. So I think that, again, that needs to be very limited. And with that... All right, Mayor Ward. Um, I, in, in the directive you're giving by the December 15th deadline, um, is that directive to say that, that the, the two agencies need to agree on the terminology that you all propose or if they 
take the model you propose and agree on their own terminology to come back to you? Is, is there flexibility for them to do that? Yeah, I, I don't think we want to limit any you know more ideas from coming to the table. Um, I do believe we want to use these six bullet points as somewhat of a framework for the discussion. Uh, but if if the ideas that that are discussed you know expand beyond this, um, I'm okay with that. And I think Chairman again is. Um, but we we think we've narrowed it down, you know, pretty well in these six bullet points. Uh, but again, if if you need to massage those and um, or expand some, I think that's good if it brings solutions. Uh, but the main thing is, and, and I realize you know th this is going to get debated heavily during the legislative process. Uh, I just think it's helpful to have, uh, especially since these two associations asked for this study committee. Um, I just think it's appropriate that they, um, you know, honor that. All of our time that we've spent, you know, a lot of us hundreds of miles um, coming to these meetings and a lot of time. And so I just think it's it's, it's the, the thing to do to, um, to get them to, to state their position on these. And, and hopefully they can uh, come to agreement on um, almost so the committee feel comfortable with that and and also don't want to diminish the the voice of the committee members uh you know the the uh, recommendations that have brought been brought to us and the the expertise is invaluable and uh, has got us to where we are now and uh, i just think it's that that last step that we need for the, what, the, you're, the, what you're asking for in, our, in my role is you're wanting a consolidated pretrial order before you're wanting a consolidated pretrial order before we go to <laughs> before we go into the session, right? I think that's a very fair request. You know, I don't know the legal term, but it, right. it sounds <laughs> sounds right. good. Right. Yes, right. right. <laughs> and so, uh, if if there's no other discussion uh, from the committee, and and seriously, I appreciate you know everybody's time consideration. I think we've narrowed things down pr pretty well. Um, and if, if ACCG and GMA could, could help us finish this, I think everybody will be grateful for that. And, uh, going into session, uh, we'll, we'll have some sol good, good solutions to, to work off of. Otherwise, I think this, this just gamemanship just continues indefinitely. Um, so, all right. Well, if there's no other discussion, appreciate everybody coming today and, uh, we'll be adjourned. Thanks. All right. Thank you.